I'm just a guy who loves Disney that has way too much time on his hands. If anybody from Disney is watching, please don't sue me. I'm here to rate, review, and describe all of your favorite things from the magical world of Disney. I'm Fawn Underwini and welcome to my Disney News and Reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Disney News and Reviews. I'm Fawn Underwini and I hope you guys have had a happy, happy Thanksgiving if you celebrate it here in the United States of America. Um, uh, you know, I had a great one. It was great having the family over. I went over and uh, we, you know, we just had a great time and uh, everybody was happy, happy, happy and uh, it was really, really good. Uh, we had a really great time. I hope you guys did too. Uh, my uh, grandparents are doing all right. Thank you so much for your kind, you know, words and well wishes. Uh, everything's going okay so far, so we're just, uh, you know, taking it one day at a time and enjoying our time together, uh, which I think is, you know, should be done anyway. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, I appreciate that. Thank you, I, I, you know, to all the people that, uh, you know, uh, helped me out with that, and uh, that was really cool of you. Um, yeah, this week, just, uh, you know, short work week, long uh, weekend, so can't really complain too much. Uh, I'm even off Monday, which is great, so uh, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to two, you know, days off where I don't have to do anything, really, aside from uh, worry about the Ravens going over to the San Diego Chargers. But, uh, you know, aside from that, it's been pretty much, that's been pretty, you know, that's been it. Uh, but yeah, that's been it for me this week. Let's get right to the news. Disney Imagineering is currently in the process of adding a new interactive queue element to the Magic Kingdom's Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. In support of this, Disney has revealed a newly expanded backstory to the attraction, featuring a new character, Barnabas T. Bullion, a, uh, the gold magnet who rules the Big Thunder Mountain or the Big Thunder Mining Company. Uh, to read the full backstory, click the you know or I'll follow the link below. It should take you to the. Uh, um, you know the page where it has the you know you know the the text backstory, uh, you know you know pretty much it's just uh, you know he you know he bought the land and mysterious stuff started happening. So uh, it's kind of cool that they're giving the you know, Big Thunder Mountain some love. It really needs some love, and uh, obviously they're already going through a uh, and uh, you know an, an expansion I guess you could say or an, or an, or an update. So uh, you know I'm really excited to see what you know what they do with this. A few notes on the new Fantasyland. Disney has recently completed work on the new Fantasyland website. Uh, in it, you can see uh, some awesome fly-throughs of the new area. Plus, you can interact with the new areas uh, to see what is new, what's new, you know, you know, what's there, and whatnot. Follow the link below to experience it. I do. Uh, it really is nice. I went and played with it. It's really cool, you know, to see uh, you know what they have there. Also, Disney has now included the new Fantasyland on their maps, uh, well, these parts, or uh, the parts that are currently open. Uh, the Mine Train Coaster and, and, the, and the Tinkerbell Pixie Hollow, they're not there yet because they don't open until later. But uh, alas, they have put the new Fantasyland on the maps, well, you know, complete with, every, you know, you know, with everything else. So that's really neat. The new test track is almost ready to be open to the public. Disney recently... Uh, allowed a limited number of cast members to preview the attraction uh, and they have gone to the internet to give their experiences on the new pre-show and post-show of the attraction. They did. They, they haven't gone in, in depth on what's going on during the show but they give you some ideas on the pre and post show. Also construction crews have just put in, uh, in place the new entrance marquee which is really cool. Uh, no guest previews have uh, taken place just yet, you know the soft openings and whatnot. And the ride officially opens on December 6th, so we're getting close. It's really exciting, and uh, you, know, you, you know, December 6th is you know, it's a, there's a lot of big stuff going on. So, uh, you know, I would love to be down there, but alas, it doesn't happen. And finally, according to the latest Epcot guide map published for the holiday period, Bistro de Paris will be renamed Monsieur Paul when it reopens in early December. Uh, the table service restaurant located in Epcot's France Pavilion has been closed for several month, months for the refurbishment. So, uh, yeah, if you're into the Bistro de Paris, it's now going to be Monsieur, Monsieur Paul. I can't pronounce French stuff. Whatever. Anywho, so that's the news for this week. Let's get right to the reviews. Alright guys, the first thing I want to review today is the Mitsukoshi Department Store. And uh, the ja in the Japan Pavilion at the World Showcase in Epcot. So that's a lot to say. 
Um, now this is probably the biggest store I would imagine uh, in Epcot or at least in, you know, in the World Showcase area. Um, they recently you know, expanded it to allow more uh, Americanized things in there. Uh, but this store is huge, and it's one of the main reasons to go to the Japan Pavilion, aside from the architecture, you know, and the and, and the live performances. But this is a you know this is a pretty big thing. Now the line of Mitsukoshi stores have been open since 1673. Uh, they uh, they pro, you know did some uh, clothing you know back in 1673, and over the years it kind of you know evolved into a giant department store and one of the few I actually the only uh, Mitsukoshi department store in uh, America is in Disney World in Epcot uh, they don't really kind of branch out but um, as you can see by you know, you, you know the pictures it's really really expansive it's 10,000 square feet and it sells such things as uh, jewelry snacks kitchenware cookbooks and toys um, one of the coolest things about this place is the you know, is, is just the fact that you can get everything here um, this is a store mainly for people who are into Japanese culture they sell pretty much just everything that is a uh, you know related to the Japanese culture you can get kimonos there they have swords they have you know you know little knickknacks shot glasses so basically what I'm saying is if you're into Japanese culture and, and, and whatnot you will you definitely want to hit this store because it's so huge there's a lot of you know stuff right there uh, and it's just really awesome. Now, um, I usually go, I, I usually do like a walkthrough through this store. I've only bought a couple things. I bought a shot glass uh, there once. Um, you know, it's just amazing, you know, for me to go in and, and to see all the different things. And, uh, you know, it's just really cool. The, uh, the wait staff or the, or the people working there are always really helpful and are really knowledgeable of things. And, the, you know, they're willing to, you know, stop and explain stuff to you, especially if you don't have any idea what's going, you know, you know what this stuff is. Uh, but it's really, really cool. Uh, now, my friends who went down with me last time spent a good portion of their Epcot day, especially their, you know, their bonus day, in the Mitsukoshi department store. Um, they're really big into that sort of thing. And uh, so they, you know, have a better idea of, you know, you know what to buy and what not to buy and, and, and things like that. So I reviewed or I videoed their review of the Mitsukoshi department store. Uh, and I'll give my review after this. So I have a video here that I want you to watch. It's their review of the Mitsukoshi department store. And, uh, you know, they have really good experiences with it. They bought a lot of stuff. So uh, it's totally worth seeing. And uh, here's my friend's review of the Mitsukoshi department store in the Japan Pavilion in Epcot. Check it out, guys. Hey. Hi. Hey, maybe. No, that's, you should have said hey. No. Yes. No. Mitsukoshi department store. We were there. It was awesome. We bought things. And we saw some things. Wait, wait, what did you buy? I bought the Domo shot list. Oh, yeah. yeah. What did you buy? A kimono. No, I don't, I don't remember you buying anything there. <laughs> I think Bob's No, I got it. stuff for Brooke and Jenny. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> and, and she got complimented by the lady who worked behind the counter. Yes. She did. I was there. True story. <laughs> Like, there's, like, sections, those. hence department store. <laughs> there's a candy store, a kimono part, a yep. standard Americanized, I guess you could say, yeah, there's, of there's like outfits. Little anime there's, like, a glass a case section, full of things. The supposed wall of Pokemon, which actually wasn't as big or as diverse as the Pokemon store in uh, New York City. Well, that's because that, that's an entire store. To put it, to put yeah, it. that's all just Nintendo solely. No, but I was told that they are they're comparable. Somebody told me they were almost the same. Well, this store was awesome because it was in Disney World. Mm -hmm. This is true. So it wins. It kind of felt like a little bit like Otakon meets um, a department store. I've never been to Otakon, so I can't. I can't say. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> no one on no one in the camera probably knows exactly what I'm talking about. What I thought was awesome was like in the candy or like the little food section, the wide range of things that they had from like the ramen to the pocky to just all kinds of things and candies that they're only in Japan. A lot of things in Japan are like seafood flavored chips and candy and things. Yeah, I didn't like that. I'm not a big fan, but it was just neat that they had them there to, <laughs> just to it is funny to buy see. them. Yeah. And it's like they had traditional Oh, and they stuff. had sake tasting yeah. there. And it was it, they had it whole, was just it was good times. They had whole tea things too. Like that yeah. whole tea yeah, sets you tea. get. Yeah. They had the the, the Japanese um Oh crap! The katana umbrellas that I wanted to get that I didn't get. They had a yeah. they had a katana letter opener. 
<laughs> was it was a mini cool. katana. <laughs> they had your domos, they had your Gundams, they had your um, Pokemon. They had all your Studio Ghibli you know stuff. No, they had Beyblade. They did have Beyblades. Beyblades. God, they had Beyblades and Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff. They had. A, it was and cool because they had a wall in the. They kind of like had the nerd section, which is all the Pokemon with the, the, the geek anime, stuff and the T-shirt yeah. stuff. Then you had your regular like. Then they had like um, the whole Sanrio corner with yeah, nothing but like Hello yeah. Kitty and Karomi and yeah. things. Then you had your your um. You can buy your sandals, your your shirts, your pants, your, your touristy like stuff. Your touristy stuff. Then they had into the actual more traditional stuff, which is where they went to the Komodo part, which is where we led to her. I'm whole pretty thing. sure there was a big statue, and like there was. I remember a statue being. There's a oh, statue outside. Service. It was fantastic. It was impeccable. That's why, I'm, that's why I was trying the, to get to the, yeah, the service. The service was amazing. Was fantastic. What was cool was uh, there was one part where the girl, when I was trying the kimonos on, she was saying something in Japanese. I guess she, and she had, I had apologized. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. And I was like, oh, no, I actually understood what you said. <laughs> so we, like, talked a little bit in Japanese, which I thought was pretty cool because she wasn't like, like, no, I can only talk in English. She was like, no, yeah, we can talk. It's fine. So I thought that was pretty cool. And, um... Just everybody was really, really nice. This yeah, very polite. Fantastic. How expensive? <laughs> <laughs> it's Disney. I was used to the prices, honestly. I was used to the prices, honestly, because I'm used to shopping for a lot of Japanese things, be it online or at conventions. But I did buy two art books that were, they were $30 a piece, which sounds like a lot for art books, but they're about yay thick a piece. And I'm used to seeing them for upwards of $50 a piece. So that was pretty cheap. It was really hit and miss. I mean, they had Yu-Gi-Oh cards there for like five bucks a pack. The, the but, best, I mean, probably the word you guys can use is, is it was comparable. It was a department store. You're, yeah. you're paying pretty much department store prices yeah. for stuff that was yeah. imported from Japan. Right, right. This is all imported stuff. So you're going to be paying an extra bit of tax for that. But they actually didn't make it too bad. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> it was awesome. I could agree with that. She got kimono. She did. That's a pretty kimono. Better write it. Five stars for me. I went back several times <laughs> just yeah. to be there. So. I gave it a solid four. Like a solid four. Three stars. No, it's good, you both. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. See, it's a little different perspective than mine because they actually went and got a whole bunch of stuff there. They actually, you know, shopped there. I just you know, kind of walked through, admire stuff, and then move on. I'm not a big uh, Disney shopper when I go there. Usually it's just, uh, you know, I, I, I don't really have a whole lot of money, so I don't really buy a whole lot. But they went, and, you know, because they, they knew this was one of the biggest things that they wanted to hit while at, uh, you know, while at Disney World. So it was awesome. Now, what am I going to give the Mitsukoshi Department Store in, in the Japan Pavilion and the World Showcase in Epcot? I'm definitely going to give this, store-wise, four stars. It's totally worth seeing, especially if you're in Epcot. This is one of those things where it's just like, even if you just meander through the store, it's huge. It's almost an attraction, pretty much, but you can buy stuff in it, and uh, you don't, or, or you don't have to buy stuff, but it's just nice to look at. There's a lot of really different stuff, you know, you know, a, a different awesome things here. There's a, a restaurant right on top, which is really cool. The, uh, the, the Japan Pavilion has really get, you know, gotten some love over the years, and... Uh, you know, it's one of the coolest places, especially with this giant store right there, so it's totally worth seeing. Uh, so, yeah, go to the Mitsukoshi Department Store in the Japan Pavilion at Epcot. It's totally worth seeing. Four big stars. Check it out. All right, guys, the next thing I want to review for you today is the It's Tough to Be a Bug 3D Show in the Tree of Life and the Oasis in the Animal Kingdom. There you go. That's, that's another hard one. It's in the Tree of Life which is in the oasis which is in the animal kingdom now if these guys say the tree of uh, the tree or the uh, it's tough to be a bug show is a 3d theater show major attraction go before noon or after 4 p.m the theater is inside the tree zany and frenetic and not to be missed four stars it's a very good show um you know it's uh, one of those shows that is kind of hidden but uh it's you know it the, the 3d-ness of the show is is very good so let me give you some backstory here. This show opened on uh, April 22nd of 1998, and it is a nine minute long 3D film based on the Disney Pixar film, A Bug's Life. Now the whole idea of this show is to find out what it would be like to be an insect. Now your host is Flick from A Bug's Life, and he educates you on why bugs shouldn't be treated as pests, uh, but more as friends. And as a guy who doesn't like bugs, namely me, I, uh, you know, it's like, whatever, just get on with the show. <laughs> um, 
There is one more over in Disney's California Adventure. It opened in uh, 2001. It's in the Bugs Land area. Uh, now, uh, one of the cool things about the about this attraction is honestly the queue. Now, in order to get to it, it's tough to be a bug. You got to go around the side a little bit, and you'll find this in you know, the entrance way. It's not too big, but it's not too small either. And then you head in. The queue can be you know pretty you know winding, but uh, if you if you, if you go during the right times, uh, you know you shouldn't have too much of a bad time. The show really loads in pretty fast, uh, and, and you know then it's really good. Uh, now, like I said, the queue is really awesome just because of the detail. It's this is the queue where you get to see a lot of the detail of the tree, which is awesome. Uh, the tree, in and of itself, is uh, you know a, an attraction that you know you you could spend hours just looking at because there's all these different intricate carvings of different animals uh, from past and present you know in this tree. So uh, you know while you're in the queue, you get to see different things like that. You get to see uh, you know. You might notice uh, some carvings of a, of, a, of, a, of an anteater or a, or a chimp or something like that. Uh, now, you know, keeping with the "it's tough to be a bug" theme, they also have because uh, you're going in for a theater show. They have uh, a lot of different posters up of different you know theater shows that you could possibly see. Uh, namely, you got uh, Beauty and the Bees. Get it? Beauty and the Bees. Web Side Story. A little Shop of Hoppers and my fair ladybug so uh, obviously you know there's a lot of play on uh, words there uh, and it's just really good uh, re you know really well done now uh, as you load up and as you may, you know make your way into this long thing and you're, you make your way to the center of the tree uh, you go into this you know uh, you know to this, this pre-show area there you see like a, you know a giant dung ball obviously it's not real dung but you see you know more posters and then you get your uh, 3d glasses uh, you know, being a pretty standard Disney 3D glasses, uh, and then you wait. Uh, you know, they're always telling you go down, keep pushing down, because they want to load as many people in this thing as they possibly can. Uh, eventually, after a little while, the doors open and you go into uh, the main auditorium, and uh, it's basically kind of like a hollowed-out version of the tree. Big screens right in front of you. That's really cool. And you get you, what's funny is you get to hear the uh, you know the kids you know you know just crying as they leave and I'll tell you why in a minute now you sit and you gotta scoot all the way over to the left and then you sit down you just scoot all the way over and then you sit down because pretty much the 3d is good from any seat in the house that's how Disney does things and then the show starts and like I said the show is all about flick telling you why bugs are good not bad and uh, you know they all the different characters from the A Bugs Life movies there um, you know all of them even the bad ones you do see Hopper he comes out and uh, causes a, you know, a ruckus now one of the things about this show is that it can be very scary especially for kids who don't quite understand that this is just a 3d show to some children you know maybe three or four maybe five or six that don't quite understand that this is just a show and don't understand that it's all entertainment they freak out especially when the lights go dark because it, it is a it is a theater show, so the lights dim down pretty good. And uh, there's also interaction, in, you know, you know, with your seats. Uh, you know, you feel like bugs kind of, you know, running underneath of you at some points of the show. So, you know, the, there's a sneeze. There's a lot of um, aroma stuff there. You know, like a, with a stink bug, obviously. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff going on, and when, uh, particularly the scene when Hopper comes in. You know, there's a, uh, um, you know. Uh, spiders come down and they hover you know you know right over top of you and kids start flipping out that's one of the things that is the most insane thing to me is that is 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 that moment when the kids just start freaking out and they have to be you know, you know taken out and they just like I, I I have not been to a show where three or four kids have not freaked out and gone running out of the theater um so it's pretty amazing to um to see that and it's uh it's it's almost kind of funny it's it's as horrible as it is it's, you know because you know disney's so focused on making things you know family friendly and whatnot and yet this show that is based you know supposed to be a, a kid friendly thing can sometimes scare the living bejesus out of uh, other kids so it's uh, it's pretty interesting uh but yeah so parents be warned with you know if you're going down there to see it's it's tough to be a bug if your child is um, a little, you know, so, you know, afraid of the dark and, uh, and and unexpected things. They might not like it, so uh, just be pre-warned pre before going in and let them know that nothing in there will hurt them. 
you know, it's it's all in fun and everything like that. It's uh, it's pretty interesting. So the kids, you know, getting scared is uh, one of the is one of the you know experiences that I'll never forget. But the It's Tough to Be a Bug is really, really good show. I really enjoy it, you know, aside from the fact that the kids kind of freak out at you know, points, uh, you know, in it. it's, it's one of those shows that kind of fits well. It fits, you know, great in with the Animal Kingdom theme. It's in the tree, and the tree itself is great, so that adds to it. But this is totally worth your time, you know, while you're there at the Animal Kingdom. So what am I going to give the It's Tough to Be a Bug show in Disney's Animal Kingdom? I'll give it four stars. In an area where there's not a whole lot to do or to see, and considering that there's not a whole lot of four and five star attractions in the Animal Kingdom, this is definitely one of those things that you got to see when you're in the Animal Kingdom. If you decide to go to the Animal Kingdom and you're done seeing Expedition Everest, Kilimanjaro Safaris, Dinosaur, even the Primeval World, this is one of those things that uh, you, you, you know you should see. A lot of people liked it. Um, you know, some people don't like it, but I think a lot, you know, a lot of people like it more than that. Um, it's, it's a pretty fun little attraction and totally worth seeing and totally worth going. So, um, uh, yeah, the, it, the, it's tough to be a bug attraction in the Tree of Life, in the Oasis, in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Totally worth seeing. Four stars. Check it out. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's Disney news and reviews. Again, uh, you know, thanks to everybody that, you know, gave a shout out to my, uh, uh, grandparents I really you know, th you know thank you for that and I hope you guys again had a great Thanksgiving and I hope you guys are still munching on your leftovers and uh, you know my grandmother she's making uh, pot pies out of the turkey and you know, the, the, the leftover turkey and carcass so uh, I'm definitely going to have to ship you know you know ship over there and steal some of her famous pot pie uh, yeah so if anybody from Disney is watching please don't sue me I really don't want people to I, I just want, I know, I, I don't want to get sued. I don't want to stop doing this. I want people to go down to Disney World and have a great time. That's kind of what I'm doing this for. I don't give any money off of this or anything like that. So, it'd be great if you couldn't sue me. That'd be great. So, yeah, if you are going down to Disney World, be sure to go to allers.net, touringplans.com, www.magic.com for our latest and greatest Disney news. WaltDisneyWorld.com is good, too. They have straight from the horse's mouth stuff. The Disney blog, it's awesome. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you guys next week for another Disney News and Reviews. Bye guys, awesome stuff. As you exit, please deposit your bug eyes outside the theater. Unless you're a real bug, of course.